Carol, we have a special guest. Who? Sandwich love, love to have a sandwich, sandwich love. Turkey or Swiss. He wanted to join. Fuck. He wanted to see you. Roast for hamburger on my sandwich. Sandwich love. Love to have a sandwich. Mustard or mayo. Love. Why isn't this recording? Sandwich, sandwich love. (laughs) It is. It is. It should be the intro. (laughs) Fuck, I want a sandwich right now. (laughs) Good morning, Misfits. You are tuning in to the 24.2 Wrap-Up Podcast. It's not only the 24.2 Wrap-Up Podcast. It is episode number 300 of the Misfit Podcast. We asked ourselves, who should we have on episode number 300? Is it someone who... Jared took Butler. beginner's class with Hunter and then qualified for the CrossFit Games three times. That has been with us throughout the entire journey. Is it nope. someone whose oh. birthday <laughs> is today? Ooh, is it someone who Hunter gave a very nice <laughs> gift of a six-round Metcon reset for their birthday? Hunter wanted to say happy birthday. He knew that it would line up very well. Mm. Welcome That's to the Hunter show, Caroline well. Spencer. Yo. Thanks. Hi, guys. Happy birthday, Carol. Carol. Thanks. Happy birthday. Oh, Sherb said it. You got him. I already, I already said, said it. it twice. You don't get a third one. All right. Aww. That's all you get. <laughs> You've met your quota. Yeah. Fuck. So because it's episode number 300, um, we're going to do two special things at the beginning of this podcast and then get into the 24.2. If you make up. me sing happy birthday, I'm going to hang up. <laughs> I'm hanging up. <laughs> We are going to give away to a Misfit subscriber $300 worth of proper and STA. And we are going to give away somewhere in the neighborhood of $300 of programming to MisfitAthletics.com as well. So I have a spreadsheet to my right here that has all of the Misfit subscribers. And we're going to run a random number generator now. If you think the fix is in, I promise you it's not. Some of these people are on a trial. No prize. (laughs) No prize. So if it gets to someone with zero uh, months subscribed, I'm going to do it again. But I think I've I've got it sorted. So um, the biggest prize pack in the history of the world goes to... History of the number two hundred and forty four, and that it's is gotta be me, Paul Hernandez. Come on, hey, Paul. Paul Hernandez, congratulations! You just won somewhere in the neighborhood of six hundred dollars worth of free shit. Please email me, coach at misfitathletics.com. We'll get you all set up. Congrats. <coughs> We're also going to do a trip down memory lane. Every person on the pod has to share one misfit story and because i didn't prompt you to do this prior to the podcast i will start for you guys so you can think about yours and hopefully we can cascade down through i got mine in honor of our guest event number two at the 2021 crossfit games was a very run heavy event did i say that right event two 2021 granite games sounds right oh semi-final games Semifinals, Granite Games. Um, Caroline, we've been working on running for a little while. By a little while, I mean, I don't know, at that point, four or five years, something to that effect. Um, You had, well, we all had driven to Montreal the year before um, to be sent home (laughs) because of COVID. Um, There was a really good chance that that was going to be the first year that you qualified for the CrossFit Games, but we just got right back to it. Went to Granite Games, um, and you took fourth place in event two, and I think that was the moment where everyone that was there knew that all of the talk of, like, I think it's the year, I think you're ready, I think you've put in the work, all that stuff. Like, that was the very moment. I remember you coming back. It was nighttime. 
um, and screaming that you had taken top 10 at a semifinal in a run event and you took fourth place. So um, one of my favorite memories, obviously getting better at certain things within your career takes however much effort it takes and some things come naturally and some of your biggest weaknesses oftentimes are what bury athletes. They basically that the, the fact that they can't do something is what ends up telling their story and why they stop doing it. Um, and now we've gotten to the point where Austin has to run out of his gear ranges if he's with you because he doesn't want to lose to you. And Austin's always been a very good runner. So that's my my trip down memory lane event two at the Granite Games 2021. Who's next? Oh, I can't. I got to focus on my my memories. This you is do. a hard one. I wish I had. I uh, wish I had a hint any up. misfit memory. Yeah. We've done three hundred fucking podcasts. <laughs> my I'll, goodness, I've I'll, been talking uh, to you fucking goons <laughs> for so long. I'm ready. I was debate. Uh, I'll I'll do two of them. I'll steal two because uh, it was also at Granite yes. Games. The first one is was after whatever the second to last event was when you when Caroline took a solid 30th in wall balls and uh whatever didn't matter wall balls <laughs> wall balls or whatever just wall balls. mostly <laughs> just wall balls a seven uh, yeah 70 pound wall ball to a 412 foot target with like 80 mile an hour winds <laughs> and I was going to say you better talk about that wind yeah Car- uh <laughs> Carol's doing everything she can uh, to stay in her position and took what a, I, I don't know, it was, it was maybe not the best event week, event of the weekend and prompt, promptly like reset and absolutely annihilated the next workout of toes to bar. And what was the, what was the other movement? D ball, step overs, step overs, uh, <laughs> beat Mallory O'Brien, but, because they gave her the place because back that's because her because O'Brien. that's her name she got her placement back um but real. more importantly the, fired up i remember <laughs> in the athlete area drew and i were talking to caroline um kind of about strategy and there's like oh what what did that workout do to me like placement wise because caroline was right on the cusp of fifth sixth seventh in that area maybe even four like fourth between fourth and seventh whatever um and i'm kind of pulling down on the leaderboard refreshing um and when we said, Caroline, you are like, what, one point out, two points out of fifth place? You she were went like in from si- fifth in, to sixth when Matt went won from, the appeal. Yeah, went from sixth to six to fifth with like one point and one event to go, basically. And you have, it, it was very straightforward. You need to beat this person, period, flat out. And as soon as we said that, I'll never forget the, just, I, I looked at Carol. She had her hands on her head like this. And I just watched every single, like, hair on her biceps like neck every single like <laughs> hair, hair stand up biceps? all right whatever the, the goosebump sorry goosebump but all the you hair, hairy hairy all thing of you carol's mustache <laughs> hair stood right up no. <laughs> every damn. single goosebump every single goosebump that was part of caroline's body like visually came like to the surface and i was like oh Fuck! Like this is <laughs> huge. Boner. This is huge. <laughs> <laughs> Fully <laughs> torn. <laughs> Fuck! Knocking oh, people God. over. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah, fuck. All right. It's also impressive that to get one. goosebumps. It was 605 degrees outside. <laughs> it was. It was, it was, it was so we made her hide in the bathroom, basically, <laughs> in between all events. Yeah. Yeah. No, I remember I called Paige in the locker room with ice cubes on me. I was like, help <laughs> like this is the situation what do i do and she she knew exactly what to say shout out to Paige. yo She's the Paige. Best. and you uh you paid it forward a year a year or two later when kelly was in the same spot and we uh sent an sos text to carol <laughs> and carol carol hit it back for uh for kelly too in the back of the semifinals area yeah all right, we'll just Hunter, do you want to save your second memory, or are you just going to do one? It was just the set. The second one was just screaming at Caroline to pick up the <laughs> fifty-pound dumbbells in the final event. I'm doing like jumping jacks on the sideline, and Caroline's like, <laughs> I don't know. It, she wasn't. She wasn't not in a rush, but she also like 
I don't know, like, <laughs> act like you want to fucking be here. Pick pick the dumbbells up, and Caroline just gave me the, hold on a second. Like, the final event. You can still see it CrossFit, on YouTube, too. I watch it every once in a Final while. event, so the cro- uh, like, the CrossFit Games ticket on the line, and I am doing jumping jacks on the sideline, screaming for her to put 100 pounds over her head to lunge. And yeah, we, Caroline's we had like, already listen. Done a million, like, 7,000 pound dumbbell devil's press clean and jerks like a handful of lunges i i couldn't fail i knew what i was doing so i heard him tell me i had <laughs> I no knew choice i, was but doing. To I didn't fucking up. know what you were doing so I, said, I didn't know second. you knew what you were doing i assumed said, you still needed me <laughs> <laughs> Self i assumed you were listening to everything i said on the sideline <laughs> Fuck. that was yeah no that was that was it worked I, our strategy worked yeah it was great her strategy it, worked. I don't think ours uh, did. <laughs> Granted, couldn't games, have hurt, right? I, I think that year. I'll go next. I think that year has <laughs> most of my all-time favorite memories. Like between games training with Hunter. Fuck. Like yeah, exactly. That pretty much sums it up. Every time I walk into the gym, Hunter, strap up. <laughs> Um, strap on like the <laughs> I anytime that I'm in like a rut or like mentally like need a little push I go back and like look at all the videos and pictures that I have from that moment of crossing the finish line and seeing Sherb and Hunter and Drew that memory has to be one of my favorites like we kind of knew that I did it and it is it, it's honestly was like everything I've ever dreamt about like that feeling exactly played out exactly how I thought it would. Um, So that, that was one of the best memories, just having everybody right there um, and then promptly getting peeled off by the the drug people that, cause I couldn't touch anybody. Yeah. The fucking DEA agent on the sideline was like, don't fucking touch her. You're going to sneak some, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to pee in a cup and give it to her, aren't you? I know it. <laughs> Why you take this piss? Um, take this piss. You'll like it. I mean, wait, hold to, on. Sorry. Along with that, the same same weekend, Sherb voluntarily taking Austin and I for like a three mile run the morning before we started. Jog. God damn it. <laughs> Just getting loose. And then I'm getting loose. And then the outfit. Sherb's uh, Sherb's outfit. The, I was hoping the that chain, was coming. The, yeah, I was. I thought that's where you're going. I was so The Penguin shirt, God. the snake, <laughs> the snakeskin pants. Fuck, <laughs> those are stretchy and nice. Wish yeah. I stole mine, Carol. That was a wild night. I was gonna say. So that Granite Games weekend obviously was impactful, as you could see through these stories. Uh, it was these stories. the best weekend of my life. But the final day. <laughs> Sorry, Austin. <laughs> you know, waterworks. You suck it, nerd. <laughs> he was there. No, He's they got married. <laughs> this is her favorite memory. <laughs> <laughs> the waterworks happen. We know Carol's going. All that cool, whatever. After though, going to H E B with Sherb to pick out an outfit, <laughs> <laughs> and then ending up at a restaurant with the most googly-eyed waitress I've ever seen in my she life. She was great. And by the end of the meal, Carol is her nails like this long. Yeah, yeah, they were fucking crazy. She long. couldn't write anything. She couldn't look at anyone. But by the end of the meal, Carol was looking at everybody. The table wrong. pounding white claws with Hunter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh man, I got I got so many fucking pictures. Am I able to share my screen? Yeah, let's see it. Let him do it. Maybe what happens. I'm scared. (laughs) I'm so scared right now. Sure, you got a memory. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, before Carol was like indie Carol, I think the CrossFit MF team was one of my favorite memories, specifically because we were kind of ragtag and not planning to make that a really a thing, and it just kind of, you know, we were at a training camp in Dubai and we found out we had a team because. Cody failed to qualify individually, and we had a bunch of people who were really fit, but quite hadn't broken down the door into individual competition. And then I just remember us training for the final, which I think was thrusters and rope climbs, and we did like fucking terrible every single time we tried it. This is perfect. Thank you, Hunter. <laughs> I was really sunburnt. <laughs> yeah, you fucking. Were. You guys remember really why Sherb took his outfit off though? <laughs> Because one of his remote, oh, see, Roy, remote, that's right. That's Roy was Roy. there. One of his not only remote me. coaching clients, but guy qualifies for the CrossFit Games, and let's just say he might be from a more conservative part of the country. He would like Sherb in a sequin dress, so Sherb just starts taking his clothes off, going into the. I want to impress him with my pecs. 
<laughs> but anyways, yeah, going back to my to walk in there topless. <laughs> you look good in glitter. Normal. Oh, great. <laughs> but anyways, we uh, we were able to finish the workout and run across the finish line. And like, I don't know. I don't think we won the heat, but we did really well. And like, it's a really fun weekend that I remember like coming together and you know being a big part of the. I, I'm not gonna say what like kicked it off for Caroline because she was obviously still training with us before that point, but like kind of showed the writing on the wall that she was gonna be going a little further than the rest of us in that group. So a very cool time. Something changed for sure. And I don't know part of the one thing that happens when you have a like a group of maybe I don't know, six to ten competitors in a gym, it can be hard to keep your eye on every single person. So potentially she was already performing at that level but when we had those first practices as a team to see who was going to be on the team like she went from like oh i wonder if caroline's going to want to try to be on the team to like very clearly the best person on the team like immediately and it was just like whoa where'd that come from like did like was this already happening or was it like the push that like got you going i don't know if you remember caroline are you asking me Sure. Welcome <laughs> to the podcast, Carol. <laughs> well, well, it started out as like a statement. A, yes. Yeah. Um, it morphed. Yeah. No. Honestly, I don't. I think just the team setting, and I kind of feel the way that same way now. Like when I get together with a group of people. Yeah. Um, I I don't know. I just kind of push to be more of like a not like a leader role, but kind of if that makes sense yeah and i remember like thinking like oh i have no choice but to do xyz so i'm just gonna do it and then i start once like i i very much needed like verbal confirmation or feedback from other people because I, I was still pretty like new to yeah. the sport and i had no idea like what what i could do or what i was capable of and then I started, I remember hearing, you know, one or two of you say like, oh, we might have like a, a individual athlete yeah. next year or this year. And that was, that was like, that stuck with me. And then I started to be like, oh, well, maybe I can do this. And then I started to, you know, get better at lifts. And I remember this like snatching the first time I snatched 150, 150, 155, 160, 165 was all in the same like yeah. session of like training. Um, and so I, I think I just kind of started to like realize and believe in myself a little bit more just from having the push of like, okay, well now I'm just doing it not just for me, but like for these individuals too. Like I have no choice, but to, you know, push myself to be better and, you know, show what I can do. So I don't, I don't remember if it was like, like in the moment, like when exactly that happened, but it was definitely like that, that season put me i think like in the position to kind of push from there <laughs> i think that's a pretty good segue to i think you have some news for the misfit community and crossfit community at large what are your plans for this season i am going individual again this year yes. <laughs> yeah it was uh <laughs> kind of a, a last minute decision but kind of. i think the the right decision yeah. for me this year um i'm really excited you can come in <laughs> i planted an easter egg in the podcast last week and members came up to me in the gym and they were like what did i hear what was that little like we thought that because of this you were training this way and i was like i don't know you'll have to ask her <laughs> <laughs> yeah i um I don't know. We, we had a, a team together that we were going to do, but the, Austin's got a lot of stuff going on. Um, I don't know if everybody knows this, but he's in the process of going to the fire Academy here. Um, and if he gets accepted in an offer and all that stuff, he'll most likely be going in July, um, which would take him out of the games. So there was a lot of like uncertainty and what ifs. And with that being one factor, I just, I've I've had like a gut feeling like I, I think I should make another push to go individual and you yeah. know you said it Drew like there's some unfinished business and I I, I agree that this is a, a good year for me to do that um, so I made the decision to to go that direction and it feels right 
you know, training feels better. There's less stress. Um, so I didn't want to put myself in the position to be on a team if, you know, two months down the road, I'm having regrets and not fully in it. Cause it's not fair to anybody else either. Right. Um, so yeah, going in D. Hell yeah. All right. We made it to the 24.2 recap show that we said we were going to do at the beginning. Um, we're going to start with the top 20 athletes giveaway. We'll start with the women top 20 <laughs> misfit women as of week two. Wait, Ted, do I read this as total leaderboard, right? I th- Cumulative. That's how I we've done it in our, the past. Our current leaderboard position. Cause Jen just hands me a piece of paper sometimes. So I'm going to read, I'm going to read this as the cumulative leaderboard. McKenna Enslin, Paige Semenza, Shaylin Laurie, Mackenzie Riley, Lindsay Hoffman, Kenzie Christie, Caroline Spencer, Megan Jurevic, Lynn Defeed, Katie Ewan, Adrian Winguez, Nicole Dubois, Shelby Kenville, Danielle Sakala, Julie Pettit Lane, Emma Hagstrom, Holly Myers, Tia Gway, Caroline Cato, and Erica Haman. Um, I think I made it through all of those with I didn't stumble. Who knows if I pronounced them correctly? Oh, I meant nice work to the athletes. Not uh, to <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'm still going to take that. I'm going to file that away. Fucking nerd. Kenzie Christie, you are our winner. Please email coach at misfitathletics.com with your address and your sizes. Congratulations. Gentlemen, start your engines. Anthony, Como, Austin Spencer, Adam, Selmani, Brandon True, George Regis, Chris Colvin, Kyle Moline, Ryan McKay, Anthony Greco, uh, Anthony Greco, then Hunter Wood, Brock Diaz, the pupil has passed the student, um, Brock Diaz, Mike Kern, Zachary Fowler, Justin LaSala, Big Truck, Matthew Sherburn, Graham Faulkner, Evan Spiker, Shane Lloyd, Eric Folds, Folds, John Domic. <laughs> that definitely it. It, That's definitely it. That's definitely it. F O U L D S. How would you guys say that? Did you just did you just, did you just become French? Fouls. Fouls. <laughs> Fouls. <coughs> and the winner Sorry, is. Sorry, I keep coughing. Zachary Fowler. Zachary hey. Fowler, congratulations. Please email coach at misfitathletics.com with your address and your sizes so we can get a gear pack out to you. Okay, 24.2. Um, before I climb onto a 60 or 70 foot tall horse and start ranting, um, I want to ask you guys a question. Do you think a lot of athletes, higher level athletes, just quote unquote went for it in this workout because – they're not super concerned with their open placement and you might as well just get after it? Or do people still not know how to strategize these workouts? What do you think the answer to that is? My ego can't take that rower monitor showing a two instead of a one to start, so I'm going to be an idiot. Sounds about right. Probably. Yeah. I mean, I I just... That's wrong. so, So we talk about this all of the time. All the time, all the time, all the time. Merry-go-round workouts. Very often, there is one variable that separates athletes from one another. Um, that was the row on this workout. That's clear, right? But I think people take that sometimes in the wrong way. Because if the row is the only variable, then someone might say, oh, okay, I need to row faster. <clears throat> But that insinuates that they did not get off the rower and get back on it as quickly as humanly possible because trading seconds in transitions or breaking up the deadlifts or breaking up the double unders is multiple seconds on your split time when you go back over to the rower. Um, And it just seems like people don't understand how to tackle these workouts. Um, And I think one thing that's funny is and maybe allows me to take a step back a little bit um, is that athletes might know this and still not be able to handle it. Because you guys, both of you had like a few nerves before and asked some silly questions about the strategy. You didn't do any of them, but you were like, what do you think? We break in the deads. Like, should we do this? Should we do that? You guys are just kind of talking through it. And I think you knew better um, 
you might not have known exactly what your pace should be on the rower. I think we learned that, I mean, you could do 10 rounds of this workout with a two minute row pace. Like that is very clear. Um, which I think <clears throat> probably is frustrating for a lot of people to hear on this. Um, but you know, like I judged two athletes that had basically the same score and one rode between a 143 and a 154 the whole time. And one of them rode at like a 225 for most of the workout. <laughs> just to give context of like hey this like you have to get your shit back together on the rower um so i just i am blown away by watching the you know sort of you know people send me the like youtube videos of other people doing this workout and right off the bat people are rowing hard and it's just like what the fuck are you doing you're gonna get the same score as everybody else like i judged one yesterday that was within I don't know, 10, 15 reps of some of the best athletes in the world. And they were, the person was rowing 10 seconds slower per 500. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I, it was a little bit tongue in cheek, the ego thing. I think there is a small element of that, but I, maybe even more so it's just the uh, athletes not doing like, I guess the math as simple as that might be, or not having a coach who, who is, who thinks like that or is, or is thinking like that. Like we, when we were, before we shot our videos, I would, I just immediately started writing. I was like, Drew, like, can you do the pace calculator thing for me? Like for every five seconds faster you row, you gain three seconds. And it's like, okay. So if that's the difference between a, a, a one fifty five. For, so I'll just use myself as an example. I rode between like a 152 and 157, I guess. And a lot of those later rounds like started to get a little bit sad. And um, like the difference there is three seconds, which is so easily made up by transitions. I think the other element of that is that athletes did not take, did not like, it's like, okay, three seconds faster three three more seconds with a five second faster pace on that row and a little at that which is a little bit more aggressive which means that after 12 minutes i'm gonna feel like shit or i can just row at this dog shit pace which is actually the correct pace and just not take any time between my row deadlift deadlift rope rope onto the rower and just be an maniac about transitioning and getting back onto the row i saw one of our affiliate athletes should have beat me in the workout and the only place that i got him was in his transitions he just transitioned a half a second slower three transitions times 10 rounds like there's 30 seconds right there there's a full set of 50 double unders there's half of your row there's a whole shitload of points um and i don't think that athletes and coaches are thinking about it at that sort of like level or we're just not not saying not really communicating to the athletes like hey like row slow transition fast it's that simple um so i think like that that would be more the more technical answer than just screaming ego uh into the microphone but i think the discipline element is the hard part for a lot of people like that's a really mm. hard thing to do to convince yourself like we had people at the wyndham gym you know approach you know into that 10th round and had the opportunity to like make you know get to the 900 point mark but they just couldn't stay disciplined they were on pace for 12 of the 20 minutes or 14 of the 20 minutes and then just the the mental fatigue of moving at that same speed over and over again that discipline's hard putting your jump rope down the same way making the same amount of steps from the jump rope onto the rower taking the same amount of steps off the rower to the barbell and doing that over and over again with the same speed you did in the first you know third of the workout first two thirds of the workout is very hard to do for the entire time and that's honestly like what I saw is the difference from people who moved like a maniac, people who didn't. It just like they were maniacal in how they transitioned from thing to thing. And there are a bunch of people who did, did better just because they transitioned better, not because they're fitter. And again, you say fitness could be smarts in that situation as well. Sure. No, I think the Caroline, you thing got is to, huge. Caroline, you got to do the workout. You are a remote coach. You're an affiliate coach. How did you feel about how people attacked this workout in general? Um, so for the most part, we like as a whole did a really good job kind of explaining things, how you did to me, as far as like, you just need to get back to the rower. Like that's, that's it. The more time spent on the rower, obviously the better. It doesn't necessarily matter how fast you're going, as long as everything between each row is quick. Um, and so a lot of people did 
a really good job, like understanding that it's, you know, a 20 minute long workout, just get back to the rower over and over again, which was really cool to see. But then on the other side, you have the people who listen, shake their head. They know what you're saying. And then three, two, one, they can't help themselves, (laughs) you know? So they're like, and then we have the conversation afterwards and they're like, yeah, I know exactly what you said. You told me what to do, but I can't help it. Like the adrenaline of the three, two, one, sure. go. And it's, and then those are the people that are like, I'm going to do it again and I'm going to do it the way that you told me to do it. And they beat their score by a full round or more. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think we're always going to have those people. And like that probably would have been me, maybe even last year or the year before, because I'm the type of person where I'm so worried about that stupid jump rope that I would have been like, well, I need to make up the time here and just try to give myself time to breathe and not transition as quick. And so that's kind of like the way that I looked at it for some of those people that struggled with one of the three movements, they were trying to make up time elsewhere when like the transitions probably would have saved them a little bit more time versus the fatigue that they got from rowing three to five seconds faster than they should have each time. (coughs) But it was a really, really cool workout to watch as like in the affiliate because you know probably everybody in the affiliate beat me (laughs) which like it's a very accessible workout and and people learning like being able to take what we say and apply it to something like a 20 minute workout with short like moderate uh short domains it it was really cool to watch people kind of push themselves um and not put themselves in the grave like 10 minutes in, just kind of stay back and forth, back and forth. And we've done a lot of those like merry-go-round style workouts. Um, so it was helpful to have like workouts to reference and get people to, you know, do it like that type of workout should be done. I really like that it can give someone peace of mind that feels like maybe their endurance or their rowing endurance isn't quite up to par with where they want to be and where they want to compete because those people often do better than the person that they're afraid of in this workout. Because again, the ego is kind of removed from it. I just have a memory of a, I believe the open test a handful of years ago was row for us, row wall ball, double under very similar workout. Um, and at the time I would say there were probably, between men and women, eight to 10 people that could beat Austin in that workout. Um, and we went into it and I gave him the strategy that I gave everybody else. But I think he was the only one who actually listened to me at the beginning of the workout. And he just trounced everybody in the workout because he was like, I just kept working really hard, especially transitions and trying to be quick with my double unders. And then your voice was in my head when I got back on the row or I don't have to go very hard. Um, and I think that's one thing. So the point of this wrap up podcast is so that people can learn from what they did in this and hopefully take it into quarterfinals and future online qualifiers and whatnot. Um, and I think, it's really important to understand that you're given a pretty decent chunk of time in a workout like this on the rower to work through what Sherb referenced in terms of being ready to go again and go do that thing. Like I, I judged someone yesterday who had been traveling all weekend. So it was kind of a low key one-on-one type of thing and I could talk them through it and it's like, okay, like as it started to look bad, it's okay that your heart rate feels bad 50 meters into the row, right? I don't need your heart rate to be back where we want it to be until 250. And when you hit 250, you have 50 meters to say, am I ready to like get my feet out of this row or go over to the barbell, do those double unders and know it's almost like holding your breath and like swimming up, swimming underwater and then coming back up that when you come back to the rower, that once again, you have 250 meters to kind of get your shit together. Um, so I think learning from a workout like this is incredibly important when there's an insinuation that two of the movements are going to take two of the three movements are going to take the same amount of time for almost every athlete. Like you have to know if that's the case, then it's super important that you actually execute on that. 
Yeah, I like the nuance of the distance as well. One, just something a little bit different in the open, but two, it makes that component of the workout even more important. Um, and I, I have to assume that that was, it would have been just as easy to program a 20 calorie row, 10 deadlifts and, and 50 double unders as it would be to, to do 300 meters. But, um, yeah, I, I just, it's one of those things where I, I think we're, we're at a place where athlete, like, I think we do a pretty good job of it. Not to, not to say that we're the best, but I mean, fight me. Like we've been, te- <laughs> we like do it, like do the mat, like on the, on a workout like this, you have to be able to, to understand like how long things are supposed to take and what, like what's going to happen if you go faster or slower here or on that thing, on the movement that is, uh, that is really driving kind of your final score and like what actually needs to happen in order to get the best score possible. And then like, again, we program these workouts like year round, the entire, this entire phase that we're still, are we still in, or that we that ended on Saturday, the, the most recent phase, like there was a cardio workout every single day because we know this style of workout gets programmed. It gets programmed at quarterfinals. It gets programmed at semifinals, even to a certain extent at the CrossFit games. And athletes have to know how to do things like, hey, what am I supposed to do with my pace when all of the movements are easy and accessible and no reason to stop moving? And, you know, we it's no standing around season, you know, part 76. And, you know, this year so we, far, though, literally. Like yeah, you very cannot much. not like, move for one single second. <laughs> yeah. You, so far you can't, in the open. You can't stop moving, but you can be moving at like a pace, you know, a pace that's appropriate for you. And I know we, uh, I, I thought about this too, when the workout got announced, it was like, this is a, you know, I hate you. We hate the, hate the term, like run your own race, but like, <gasps> I'm going to say like, there are, there are instances where it's like, you have to, it's like, if it's a 2k row for time, it's like, I'm going to race the other person. It's like, you're gonna have a bad time if you're sitting next to Brent Fikowski trying to hold his pace on the 2k time trial. But, um, and it's the same, it was the same thing in this workout where it's like, you have to know what pace is appropriate for you, but it's much more important to have that discipline and understand what you're looking at, what this workout is trying to force you to do. And that is, you know, take one step out of the rower and your hands are on the barbell. Take one step backward, you're starting to jump rope. You put the jump rope down and one step into the rower. And like that maniacal, repetitive, redundant, like process has to be has to be part of your skill set as a high level athlete. One of the things I really appreciated listening kind of in the initial reactions is everyone's kind of advice on the rower. And I don't know if you guys had tuned into this as well, but so many people were saying you have to row faster than your 5K PR. And I just thought about like, what is the average person's 5K? It's one of PR? the dumbest things that I've heard. I mean, did you, you must have heard it though, right? Life. You must have yeah, heard it. I mean, internet, yeah, I mean, honestly, I just, I heard enough advice where it was like, I, I like, Do whatever. I Google Sheets is free. Like, math is not that hard. Equals one number divided by one number equals this one plus this one. Like, it's not rocket science to do the math on what the workout is. Um, so yeah, I, I saw plenty of stuff and I just felt like almost like made me want to hide our quarterfinals content even more to be like, fine, if you guys don't understand how these workouts work, then we'll tell our athletes how they work and good luck. (laughs) So yeah, I saw it. I saw it. I'm biting my tongue a little bit because again, I don't know, I don't know exactly what the goal is for a lot of the people that I saw, like really fumble this workout. Um, but man, I saw a lot of people rowing hard right from the beginning. And I was just like, I, what, are you, what are you doing? Because as far as I could tell, bit. when I looked at the leaderboard, there was basically one person, one single person who was fit enough and probably large enough to, to tackle this workout that way, which, you know, congratulations. But we're not. Thank you. If you're making, yeah. <laughs> it's definitely you. Kids huge. Definitely um, you. We're not making this content for one person, two people, three people. We're trying to send information out to the masses. Um, Caroline, one question that we ask weekly on this is what do you get out of the open? Like if your goals are further down the road, what can you do during this time to like make it really worthwhile? Um, I think this week was a great example for me personally. Like 
this workout was a, an opportunity for me to one, like pace, but also try to get out of my, my head with a movement that I'm not super fond of. Um, I didn't execute it like I wanted to, but what I got out of the way that I did it will help me in the long run. Like I, I now know, like, as far, as far as like you said, the transitions and all that stuff, I wasn't, I was transitioning not quickly, but I wasn't standing around. I was just kind of taking my time getting from one thing to the other. And I needed to, to become more of like a, a psychotic mover when it comes to that thing, yeah. like that aspect of it. Um, but you know, I now I know what I needed to do differently and I'll do that next time. I, I would like to retest this workout at some point. I think it's a great test. Um, and I'll use that next time. And, and when we have a workout that comes up like it, I'm sure there will be one in quarterfinals or semifinals at least where I can use, you know, what I got out of this week's and apply it to that. So I, I don't think it's necessarily a test where I needed to redo it to try to prove to myself that I can do it differently. Um, so that, that's one, that's a big, big step for me is taking info that I got from it, the way that I did it and being able to apply it down the road versus like in like a redo situation. Sure. How was it at the affiliate guys? Uh, I know obviously I mean, 20 minutes and you got to use a rower. So that's, there's some logistical issues there, but what was the vibe it's, like? It's a little bit limiting, but I think overall people liked that we had a second workout or a second week in a row of a workout that basically everybody who comes to the gym somewhat consistently and has double unders can participate in. So the participation, the excitement of being able to do a workout RX, I think has been really uh, encouraging and invigorating for the athletes because again, it's not a gimme that you have a 185, 125 deadlift for that many reps. It's not a gimme you have double unders, but like the skills aren't like, all right, you need to be able to do a wall facing strict handstand push up. You don't need to be able to do a bar muscle up. These are things that, you know, the casual CrossFitter who comes three to four days a week could work on and have as a skill and a strength to be able to do the workout kind of as prescribed. So the vibe overall was, was pretty good. Um, I unfortunately did not get to participate in the entire night. Uh, Noel tore Achilles during the double unders. So she, um, she didn't warm up, and uh, she oh, learned why. Girl. Oh, don't yeah. call her out like that. No, no I'm going to oh, it's, no. it's, it's a lesson. It's a lesson that I want others to listen to. I don't give you warm-ups for my benefit. It's for your benefit. Please do them. Make sure you're ready to do the workout. And, you know, she was racing the last minute of the workout, didn't warm up, probably didn't get the best sleep last night. We got two small kids, so, you know, got a lot of control, landed funny. As soon as she hit the deck, I knew exactly what happened. And, uh, you know, about an hour later, we were at quick care, so... She's a. Uh, oh, she's had to learn the lesson the hard way, and unfortunately, I get, didn't get to be there the entire night. But obviously, things take priority, and I got a really good team there, so they took care of the you know the gym. But overall, I heard really good positive vibes from everybody. So, for as much as I saw, it was a good time. It was a good time. People seemed to enjoy the workout. Um, obviously, a little bit down on my side, but for the most part, uh, I think it was a good workout and a you know good experience for almost everyone. Yeah, what we had a similar, Hunter? yeah, similar, uh, similar vibe over here. It's a, uh, it's actually kind of, not challenging, but um, like the strategy that we're kind of talking about here is obviously geared towards a certain level of athlete where we're kind <laughs> of saying like, hey, you're you're doing these deadlifts unbroken, you're doing double unders unbroken, you have to be dialed in with like some really, really <laughs> small things. Whereas the affiliate athlete, it's like. Hey, should I break these deadlifts up? You know, what if I, what if, what if these double unders put my heart in my throat? Um, and you know, and then there are some people who are like, Hey, like, should I even do this workout as prescribed? And, um, that, that provides a different layer of like coaching challenge, not, 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 you know, not in a bad way by any means, but trying to adjust that advice for somebody who's like, hey, the best strategy for you is actually probably to do six and four on your deadlifts, not because you can't do 10 at 185, but because like even the smallest amount of grip fatigue fucks up your double unders and you're going to spend six hours there uh, instead of, you know, a quick break between two easy sets of deadlifts. And then maybe you approach the double unders with, 20 20 and 10 or something like that where it's not so much about you know the row pace is actually 
you know, there's a different, there's a different set of instructions for that type of athlete versus the competitor that we're talking about. So, um, that's always fun and kind of cool to try to personalize the advice for the individual athlete to make sure that they get the most out of themselves. And then there's always a one or two, um, the, you know, Will, uh, Atamian was, he was gunning for my score. It was very much in his, his wheelhouse. And I was trying to, toward the end of the workout there was trying to really push him into that, into that zone. And ultimately he, uh, just just the transitions were just a tiny bit tiny bit behind what they needed to be he's a much better rower um deadlift is great double unders were were you know he put together a great performance as far as the double unders go and um trying to encourage athletes to have like you know have that carrot out there that it's just like you can get there like it's a little bit maybe a little bit farther than you want to reach yeah a little dangly here um <laughs> We'll let you two in the same room. But it's attainable. <laughs> but it's attainable for for you to beat. So, um, yeah, it was a fun workout, and like Sherb said, pretty cool that uh, it's it's been a, a fairly accessible open so far. I I suspect week three will be slightly less accessible, but uh, that's how it goes. Fucking hope so. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> throw me a bone <laughs> or two. Oh, goodness. Um, so the macro view on that is still the same, though. Wouldn't you agree, Hunter? Like, if it's no standing around season and we're going from get off the rower, get back on to it as quick as possible, that's what yeah, that it's... means for you as an athlete. So we always say break the workout before it breaks you. That's obviously really important because then you get to decide how long it is. But there's nothing wrong with 6 and 4, 20, 20, 10 if that's your plan to get back to the row as quick as possible. Right. Yeah. I mean the, it's a, it's a slightly higher level overview of telling the athlete like, Hey, this is a 20 minute workout. That's what you're worried about for the individual competitor. It's like, Hey, this is nine to 11 rounds where like you're doing these rounds, like clockwork, those splits are within a second for the affiliate athlete. It's like, Hey, this is a 20 minute workout. There's probably one movement in here. That's got your, that's got your number a little bit. Let's make sure that you are doing all three of these movements in such a way that minimizes your time of, you know, standing around, but with the recognition that this is 20 minutes of movement, not five minutes of hard as, as hard as I can, and then see what happens. I think that's the, it's just much more of like communicating to the athlete that like, just because those 10 deadlifts are easily unbroken and those 50 double unders are unbroken for the most part, maybe a trip here or there does not mean that unbroken and a two and a half minute row pace is necessarily the right strategy for you, you know, affiliate athlete. Uh, it's much more a broader understanding that this is 20 minutes where I need you to be moving at a very similar pace from minute one to minute 17 and then let her rip for, you know, the last two, three minutes, whatever you've got left in the tank. So sim yeah, same, same general idea, different, maybe uh method of communicating that sort of the same idea. Honestly, I think a lot of oh, people, go ahead, Caroline, sorry. sorry. I think a lot of people learned a lot from week one, like as far as the way that that first workout was set up, like you gained a lot more by going slower and trying to ramp up a little bit towards like the second set of 15 and then finish faster. Um, and you know, everybody that were, that was in here at least did the first one and redid, they were like, they knew that they had their strategy backwards. They, they approached it as like go hard and hang on and see what happens. But in a workout like that specifically too, where it's like a very fast burn, like with the, the dynamic movements of, of the dumbbell snatch and the burpee, you can put yourself in a huge hole, like if you go out way too hot. So we had a lot of people that like after week one, they were kind of learned their lesson of like, okay, I know now, especially since it's a 20 minute workout with potentially seven, eight, nine, ten 10 rounds. If I do that, you know, within the first three minutes, I'm going to suffer for 17 minutes. Um, so it was, it was cool to kind of have people apply that, that first week and what they learned, even though it's two very different workouts. Um, as far as like strategy goes, like if you, for the average person, if you went out way too hot, like you, you suffered big time. Yeah. And recognizing the difference too, between, you know, in, in week one, it's like, so you go out a little bit too hot 
And when it comes around and catches you, it's like that stops you literally dead in your tracks because both of the movements, a burpee and a dumbbell snatch, like you're either doing the movement or you're not. Whereas with week two, you're spending 12 or so out of the 20 minutes on a rower where you can row as sadly as you want and even like fucking sit on your rower and just breathe for a few seconds. And that monitor will still tick away meters. You will still be doing work without doing any work. And when a workout, you know, has more than half of the time kind of afforded to you with, with a movement that you can do very slowly, but still complete work like that has, that has a valuable lesson kind of baked in there as well. I had two athletes, um, the first person that I judged in week one and the first person that I judged in week two, we just had Mm -hmm. the best chat about what the strategy was, but they're both new and I just didn't really know them that well. So I think all of the other coaches would have been able to tell me like, they're not going to listen to a fucking word you said, by the way. Um, but I was positive that I had really set them on the right path. First person looked like he was trying to throw the dumbbell through the roof last week. (laughs) And then this week, three, two, one, go one forty two pace. I'm just like, that's, that's the work. If if you're going to do what we talked about, you're going to get the world (laughs) record on this workout. I just want to throw it out there. And we got mm, 10 or so minutes into the workout. He took a six second break on his double unders. Um, And when he got back on the rower, I said, that is the equivalent of you rowing at like a 210. So you taking that six second break, like how about maybe even just the high 150s, low twos? Like he probably should have been in a 210 the whole time. Um, But I think doing that when you're a good rower, it's just so hard. He's also younger. Like I think that's so hard for people to handle. And I had the same conversation with him that I then had in reverse with somebody else. Like, when he got done that workout, he was cooked. The entire heat was just like crawling around the gym. And for very different reasons, he buried himself all on his own on the rower, like six minutes into the workout. But then another person is rolling around on the floor because they did the right strategy and accumulated a pretty incredible amount of work over the 20 minutes. And it's like, how often... How often is that going to happen within an affiliate class? How often are we going to be at the whiteboard being like, this is how you game this to get the absolute best score in the gym? Like we're always talking about stimulus. We're always talking about, you know, attacking workouts. If you suck at rowing, we want you to go a little bit harder on the rower during this workout, that sort of thing. And I think flipping that switch is really challenging for people. Like we had someone who... Is finishes in class middle of the pack was the other person that had that conversation with in the other direction (laughs) that just really took on the advice really well and got a really good score and it was like how often do we do that though how often do we ask you guys to actually like go in and get the absolute best score and that's kind of a can of worms like i don't know how often you would want to ask athletes to do that i know that we have the test retest model but this is definitely like a big nuance at the affiliate level to say no, 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 no. Like I can teach you how to get a better score here and you might not, might not have to try as hard until whatever the 14th minute. Yeah. yeah we mean, talk I about think... that. Oh, sorry. I say we talk about that quite a bit in the affiliate. Like sometimes we overcorrect and give people too much strategy and that like prevents them from burning themselves down in affiliate class. And sometimes like I would say dampens their growth a bit because they play things a little too safe, but like this is the time where an athlete who's worked really hard year round, cultivating a lot of fitness could be advised on how to best apply their fitness into a workout like this. So I, I mean, I think there's a time and a place for strategy. I think, you know, test retest kind of idea in the uh, beginning of a phase or in the affiliates, like, you know, phase long test. But outside of that, like we would encourage athletes to kind of seek out the places that they feel the least comfortable and kind of lean into doing those things at a pace that's, you know, really terrible. Like for example, the power snatch thing that Hunter wrote, um, I think it's echo bike, right? Echo bike power snatch. Is what is correct? it Caroline? Yeah. Echo bike power snatch. The Metcon reset. Oh yeah. Yeah. That was bad. Yeah. bad so bad. like he was asking me about that. He's like, do I get the best score or do I like set myself on fire? And I'm like, you should do 
what sounds like the worst idea possible, knowing that you're gonna put yourself in a grave, specifically because you often play things on a bit closer to the chest and a bit safer. I want you to see where that, that limit lies and learn from that. Now, is that the strategy every single you're time? No. Man, sure. That's all right, it'll be okay. <laughs> but like, it's important for them to realize that like you should lean into like finding out what does happen and seeing what you can come back from and then quickly realizing like, all right, maybe the dial shouldn't be at 100, it should be at 85 or 75, depending on you know whatever the piece is. 25. I just think, <laughs> <laughs> I just think the more, it, the less experienced the athlete, the broader the guidance get you know Ooh. has to be there's also a an element of like you have to have a certain level of fitness in order to pace things in order to know how to pace things like if you're like uh, yeah maybe maybe we could convince you could convince an affiliate athlete like hey the actual the correct row pace for you is a 245 in this workout right and it's like even that athlete does like the odd if you're giving that instruction to an athlete like there are so many other things between that conversation and like the execution and trying to get the best score possible that need to happen that it's more like this is a 20 minute workout. I need you to not go out that hard. Um, and then, can, you know, juxtaposing that with class, taking like a regular old Wednesday class workout. Sure. I think is like, you know, we we're generally in agreement there where it's like you kind of have to earn your right to pace a workout by learning how to do it incorrectly like we don't most of us did not learn how to you know pace and do a workout correctly by gradually creeping up to that line of like that's too far and staying south of it it's always like i'm gonna blast over that line and then eventually i'm gonna learn what the correct pace is and again with that comes a certain degree of fitness that you have to have like it doesn't matter if you have the most perfect strategy on the planet if your fitness doesn't support the execution of that or you break you know that you're going to break down 15 minutes in and you don't know actually what's going to happen like going so far in the strategic direction doesn't even make sense because the athlete doesn't have the fitness to support it so uh, i think again kind of at a certain point there's a there's a much broader set of instructions for an affiliate athlete and just what the way that they progress is just through time and repetition and you know trying to take mental Going notes there. about how workouts feel and just the experience of you know the longer you do it the better at those type of workouts you're going to get i don't actually believe that there's much controversy surrounding the current open programming i just think it's really easy for content creators to like say shitty stuff and then you get views and then you get sponsors and stuff. You know what I mean? Like I'm not, I'm not. So the reason I brought that up is just to say, we already get to see how a leaderboard takes shape. And I think you get um, to involve as many people as possible and you get proof of concept once the final picture is drawn. Um, we're two chapters into a book that's three or four chapters long. Um, and I think you looked at you look at week one and you could pick out a few names on the leaderboard that were like, who is that? Um, I'm not exactly sure who that is. And then so many of those people disappear for 24.2 and you get the overall score. And you go to the men's side and you just look who's there and you get proof of concept of, of what they're trying to do. Um, just this idea of like the fittest will show out to be the fittest. And I think if we end up getting conditioning and weights in 24.3, if there's a A and a B, whatever, or if it's an ascending thing where you, you know, sort of pay to play at the higher levels, um, then you, you just really get to see what the leaderboard's actually supposed to be. And then that's when it's done and you can do it in a simple and effective way. Um, you know, we get the opportunity to program for some bigger competitions and um, we'll have the, the conversation, the initial conversation with the competition director about like, who is your ideal athlete that's going to be within this competition? Who's going to be in the scale division, the elite division, the RX, whatever. And they're often scared of putting out the kind of workout um, that like people don't want to sign up for the competition. 
because it's like pistol backflips and triple unders and 315 showing overhead and just things of that nature. And I tell them every time, like we program a competition at our gym every year that anyone can do. And we fucking bury people in that. You go run, you do burpee box jump overs. Like you can have a max lift because everyone's got a one rep max. I mean, some are lower, some are higher. But like if if we're worried about that, if we're flirting with that line, it is so easy for us to still get the stimulus that we want just by lowering the weight, upping the reps on certain things, whatever it is. So um, I think if you need to rely on muscle ups and whatever, like – other things that certain people can't do, um, you're almost hiding behind that kind of programming. I think just within the open, obviously as we move forward, it's nice to have complexity in there and it's nice for athletes to be able to show off their skills as long as it's balanced. But, um, I think so far, as long as they make athletes push again and either get to show off their skill or, and, or lift a heavier weight as they go, um, then you'll end up with a leaderboard that was going to be there all along. I mean, in your example, the competition that we program where it's a team of four that's as ex- about as accessible as you can get it, you know, given <laughs> one single division, the fittest, the teams that you would expect to win still win. And like through places, you know, one through five, plus or minus like one spot here or there. And it just goes to show like it, you know, Glassman's original kind of <laughs> conversation about the open and, and regionals at the time in the, in the CrossFit games. It's like, we already know who's going to win. Who's the fittest man on earth, fittest man and woman on earth after the open. It's like, you know, it might, might be a little bit different now, but I, you know, at the end of Tuesday next week, or I guess tomorrow, depending on when you're listening to this, like, yeah, the leaderboard's not going to look It's going to look very similar to how it looks every year. And sure, with fewer, with a smaller sample size of, you know, only three or maybe four (coughs) workouts, there might be, there are always a handful that are mixed in, you know, that haven't been filtered down the leaderboard a little bit. And that's just math. But like, again, at the end of, at the end of next week, you'll see the same old familiar faces. You'll see some, obviously some new folks that are up and coming and, and, you know, maybe move on to the, move on to semifinals, but in you know in Madison you're going to see the same names. Is it Madison again this year or Austin? I forget Fort what Knox. year either. <laughs> Fort Worth. Civic Fort Center. Worth. That's right. <laughs> Fort Knox. You're getting so, to Carson. I'm sorry, we're going to Knoxville <laughs> and then Fort Worth. Carson. Yeah, wherever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great okay so it's annoying to ask you guys to guess what the workout is so what we do is we ask you to say what you want the workout to be um hunter and sherb try harder this week at least give me like time domain or like give me something what did we say last just, week you just remember. said you said deadlift handstand walk over and over i didn't get a short Fuck. a long a heavy a light it didn't matter i said long i said mer- <laughs> i said long merry-go-round didn't i you did but it seemed like you were guessing so you also got docked. Well, what I want it, to what I would right like to. it to be, I would like twenty four point three to be twenty four point two. Do that again. <laughs> Here you go. That would be an ultimate troll, huh? I could, yeah. I mean, no, I don't. No, I'll I'll make a guess because I don't like what I would like <laughs> it to be is is not what it's going to be. So, uh, but actually, when I, I was talking to Kyle. Um, and his, his actual guess I thought was a pretty good one. It was the, it was a repeat of the, it was like front squat, toe to bar, thruster, rest, front squat, chest to bar, thruster, rest, front squat, bar muscle up, chest or er, thruster. And then you had the seven minutes for the lift. Uh, that Why don't stupid. I remember that workout? You know, I didn't either. Dumb. When he was, I was like, no, this is, that's not so a one minute rest, right? Has a one minute yeah, rest after one each one of those rest. sections. I think it was yeah. 2020. It went out with a whimper. One. It was one of the most boring open workouts like ever. Lame. It was two years ago. Because um, we did the double under version the year after, right? Yes. The one we that one was good. And we're like, we saw the sure and we're like, that's doom. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking dumb. Yeah, I did that. Oh, see, I thought workout. the double under workout was dumb. I thought that was dumber. I mean, it was like, a hundred double total. Yeah, you're right. 
it was just weird because the chunk of bar muscle ups for most people was too much. So then the final barbell didn't matter at all. It was like completely didn't feel that irrelevant. way to me. Like you, you raced over. <laughs> oh, I remember yeah. Hunter was ahead by like two and a half hours and then he was doing singles on his bar muscle ups and it looked like his <laughs> heart rate was at 65. And I was like, bro, can you, can you just do more of those, please? I was tired. <laughs> was dangerous. I Caroline, what do you want to be? <laughs> mm, I would like it to be a like go until you can't sort of work out with thrusters and chest to bar pull ups or toes to bar something like that yeah like, where you have to really grind through if you want to keep going yeah i was thinking i'm waiting for that stupid Ladder fucking three rounder like... to come back it's like every four minutes you got to do three rounds of thrusters then chest to bar pull ups the one that uh what's his name who set the world record from New York, the Tyler, Tyler, Tyler McBride. Tyler McBride one. Oh, yeah. We watched Tyler McBride do that workout for like six hours, and he was like, can I stop <laughs> doing bored. this workout? <laughs> that three-rounder, I'm waiting for that to come back. That was my thought until Kyle mentioned that other one, which had the lift in it, and I was like, yeah, I feel like they I feel like they want to throw a lift in there for the Do you think they'll go the short plus a lift, or will they go medium ascending weight? And I feel like it's got to be, sh well... I feel like it's got to be short. I think it'll be a similar time domain to week one. Shrebo, 33, you want? 27, 21, 59. You wrote a whole ass workout? Thruster chest the bar? Oh. Is that yeah, you wanted to be? One, or is that your no, guess? That's not what I want. That's my guess. That's not what I want. Jeez. No I want to want a max deadlift. Maybe I would like, like it to be one max like... set of muscle ups into max... Uh, height box, box jump. jump. There you yeah, go. Yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I do really That's well what I want that. it to be. All, uh, I don't know. Actually, probably max set of strict handstand push-ups um, on old blue, a little neck trampoline, yeah. and Let's then go. jump onto the box. Yeah. No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll take part one. All right. Um, we're gonna do final thoughts here, um, ladies and gentlemen of the CrossFit community. Uh, sheets.google.com is that what it is or is it google.sheets.com I think it's sheets.google.com probably sheets yeah um, learn how to use that learn how to do a little bit of math maybe I lost Drew SOS Drew are you there I think that was his final thought learn how to do that some was math. excellent <laughs> nice, perfect good, Ronda, what do you got good stuff uh yeah, wait for Drew to reconnect here. He's fucking <laughs> frame by frame. Oh, you're, there you you're, are. You're there learn you are. how to do fucking math. Oh. Yeah, see, I told <laughs> you. That's, that's basically all what I said. said. All he I knew. To say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, or text me. Oh, man. Final thoughts. Don't text me. Uh, <laughs> There's your final thoughts. A good one. Yeah, done. <laughs> Don't text me. Don't fucking text me. Oh, final thoughts. Oh, man, I don't know. Just, hey, get ready for a fun week three. I think most folks are really looking forward to quarterfinals and beyond, and CrossFit's looking forward to that influx of uh, registration fees, up 20% from last year, and there we go. <laughs> <coughs> what you got for us, Shreb? I don't got much. Um... Do your warm up? Yeah. Yeah, do your fucking warm up. Oh, yeah. I don't do it for my benefit, I do it for yours. So please, please, please get yourself ready before you go. If nothing else, it keeps you injury free. And if best case scenario it gives you the best chance to do the best you can in the workout. So please fucking do it. Final thoughts, Caroline. Caroline? Oh. Um, <laughs> let's see. Happy yeah, I... birthday. No. <laughs> <laughs> He just wants March to leave. 12th. He said if anyone sung it, he could Remember. leave. <laughs> yeah, I'm out. <laughs> Remember the date. Um, yeah, no, as we wrap up week three, just I think kind of remembering like that your progress year to year is what you should focus on, like the big picture stuff. Big picture. Wow. Um, a lot of people are still kind of in the mindset of like comparing themselves to, you know, this person, this person. So just try to enjoy it and like the more fun you can have with it each week and the more you can kind of just like be happy and proud of your own efforts, 
the better the open gets and like moving forward to quarterfinals. Yes. They're taking more people, but that doesn't mean that you didn't earn your spot to move on to the next level. Like a lot of people are still kind of like, well, they increase the percentages. Like I'm not, I don't feel as, you know, good as I, as I would, you know, to work towards it as opposed to last year, but you're still working hard each week to get to the next stage. So just keep having fun with it. And yeah. Don't be too hard on yourself. My actual final thoughts are um, the post-workout debrief and learning week to week. As coaches, we (laughs) got (laughs) it. As coaches, I guarantee there are open (laughs) announcements or strategies over the last 14 years um, that we wish we could go and have back. So the idea from the coaching perspective and the athlete perspective is you are handed a mountain of data every single time you work out, every week that you work out, every training phase that you do. Um, And as coaches and athletes, you can learn from those things, learn how to strategize, learn how to get better, do all of that good stuff. So um, if you rode at a 143 and got five rounds, on this workout, learn from your mistakes and give it the old 210 pace next time. Shut up, you fuck. Drew, do you remember what you call a pile of cats? I do. Meowton? Give it to him, Hunter. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I don't remember, but I got there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's what a memory. What about a cow with no arms and no legs? Ground beef, yo. Everybody nice. knows that. Do cows have arms? Shut the fuck They're up, probably. Ted. He doesn't have any arms or hands, but it doesn't stop him from dancing. Now does it? <laughs> what are they? Does it, they have four the feet? Hour. Four They're legs? Just legs, yeah. Just legs? Four arms. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Misfit Podcast, and thank you to our show sponsors. You can head to sharpentheaxco.com and use the code word CAROL, C-A-R-O-L. You save 10% on your order, and you give CAROL... 10% for her birthday or her CrossFit game season. She's working for it right now. We gotta, Properfuel.co. We gotta you can use Carol there as well for the best supplements in the game. Ooh. We'll see you next week for 24.3. Happy birthday, Carol! Thanks! Woo! Ooh, balloons. Nice job, Sherb. <laughs> <laughs>